Do you want to learn Spanish, but you are so afraid of Spanish conjugations? Don't worry, because in this video, I'm going to be teaching you everything you need to know about Spanish verbs and their conjugations so you can start speaking more like a native today. I promise by the end of this video, you're going to know about the three different kinds of verbs that there are in Spanish and what an infinitive verb is because this is going to help you to speak with more fluency and more clarity. And I'm going to relate this into English so you can understand exactly what I mean. Before we can jump into what a Spanish verb is, we have to know what is a verb and what is its purpose when we are speaking a language. You can have a noun, a verb, or an adjective. Now, a noun, it's a person, place, or thing. A verb, on the other hand, tells us what that person in place or thing does. In English, we have many types of verbs. We have a regular verb, which can end in ed when we're talking about something finished, or we have an irregular verb, which completely changes its form. An example of an irregular verb in English is go to went. The verb change is massive. And this is what makes learning English hard for a lot of people who don't speak it as a first language. Luckily for you, as a native English speaker, learning Spanish verbs is super simple because they follow patterns. Once you learn these patterns, you'll be able to conjugate pretty much any verb that you want in Spanish with ease and accuracy. I'm only going to focus on the present tense verbs in Spanish in this video today. Whenever you start talking about the past tense, it does get a little bit more difficult. If you want to check out the past tense verbs in Spanish, go ahead and check out this video where I'm going to explain the difference in the two different types of past tense in Spanish. Now that we know what a verb is, let's talk about infinitive verbs because many people that translate from Spanish to English make a huge mistake with infinitive verbs. It affects the way you speak and it'll also affect your accuracy. So an infinitive verb in Spanish is a verb that is not conjugated. That means it's going to end with AR, ER, or IR. Correr, hablar, escribir, all of these verbs are in the infinitive form, and we know it's in the infinitive form because we see the verb ending AR, ER, and IR. So how do we translate these into English, and why should we do it this way? Well, whenever we're putting sentences together in Spanish, it's very important that if you have one verb that is conjugated, the next one that you have in the sentence is usually in the infinitive form. And if we're doing this in English, we could say something like, I like to talk. Let's look at this in comparison to the Spanish sentence, me gusta hablar. We can see that gusta from the verb gustar is conjugated for me, myself, I, in the present tense. But look at the next verb, hablar. This is in the infinitive form. And if we were to translate this into English, it would be I like to talk. So whenever you're learning verbs in Spanish, understand that infinitive verbs always have two and then the actual verb itself. If you start to apply this in your spoken Spanish, I guarantee you it's going to make your speaking more accurate and more fluent. Correr is an ER verb, and we know because at the end of the verb, we see ER. We also have the verb hablar. Hablar is an AR verb. We can tell because at the end of the word, we see AR. Escribir. Escribir is also an IR verb, and we can tell because we look at the end of the word. These endings of the words in Spanish, a big grammatical term for them is desinencia. And you don't have to worry about this word. You only need to learn the three different types of verbs and how to conjugate them. Whenever we're conjugating a verb, we need to focus on the subject. And in Spanish, there are multiple subjects. You can have yo, tu, usted. And I want to note that tu and usted both mean you, but they're used differently in Spanish in some Spanish-speaking countries. If this is something you're interested in seeing, go ahead and click on the video here where I'm going to tell you the difference between tu and usted. And you're not going to believe that they're actually more interchangeable than many native speakers would like for you to believe. So we have yo, tu, usted. Then we have él or ella. Then we have nosotros. We have ellos, ellas. And then we have ustedes. These are all of the different subjects. And you actually conjugate verbs differently according to the subject. And here is a pro tip. In English, we always have to state the subject. But in Spanish, we do not. This is baked into the verb. That's why whenever you hear people speaking in Spanish, they can remove the subject completely. And the, the person they're talking to will still understand them. The subject is baked into the verb whenever we change the AR, ER, or IR ending 
whenever we change this desinencia, it's going to let the speaker know what the subject of the sentence is. In Spanish, there are actually three different types of moods that you can use. And in this video, I'm only going to focus on verbs in the indicative form. Indicative means present tense, we're affirming something. Well, so just keep in mind that all of the verb endings and all of the verb conjugations I'm talking about in this video are only about the present tense for something that you can affirm. This is very important and that's because whenever I start talking later in other videos about the subjunctive mood, you're going to see why I say affirm or not affirm. We know that we don't have to use the subject whenever we're conjugating a verb in Spanish. But how do we conjugate these verbs to let people know what the subject is whenever we're speaking to them? Let's take a look at a chart. Whenever we have yo, which is I in Spanish, you always have to change the desinencia, the end of the word, the A-R, E-R, or I-R, you always have to put an O at the end of it. And whenever you do this, it's going to tell people that you are talking about yourself whenever you're speaking with them. So let's take an example. Yo hablo español. If we look here, I changed hablar to hablo, right? So let's take off that AR. Let's put an O there. So we can change it from yo hablar español to yo hablo español. Because we moved this AR and we placed an O there, it means I speak Spanish. I can also completely remove yo and say hablo español because whenever we put the O, it means yo. Whenever we want to do this for tú, which is you in Spanish, you have to remove one of these endings, the AR, ER, or IR, and you have to put either an AS or an ES. And what determines AS or ES depends on the verb type. This is why it's very important for you to recognize and understand that in Spanish there are three different verb endings. Because whenever we're talking about two, if we have a word like hablar, which has an AR ending, we're going to replace that AR ending with an AS ending. So instead of Tú hablar español, it becomes tú hablas español. Or we can completely remove the subject from here because, again, that verb ending tells us who the subject is. And we can just say, hablas español. This is obviously a question, but you can also use it in a statement. Whenever we're using usted, which is a formal version of you, it's very important you understand that usted in some Spanish-speaking countries is interchangeable with two, and oftentimes it will be used more than two. I'm going to make a video about it so you can understand a little better, so if, if you find this useful, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Whenever we're conjugating a verb for usted, we always have to put either an A or an E. Again, this is going to depend on the verb, so let's look at an IR verb this time, that way we can understand it in connection with an AR verb. I don't say usted escribir español. This doesn't make any sense. Instead, we have to remove the IR at the end and it becomes an E. Let's look at how we do this for he or she in Spanish. We're going to focus on he first. So again, you have to understand that verbs end with AR, ER, or IR. And whenever we're talking about el, which means he, we're either going to put an A or an E at the end. So if we have a verb andar, I could say el anda in la calle. We're going to take off the AR and we're just going to replace it with an A. We can also remove the subject el and just say anda en el parque. We don't need this subject because the verb tells us who the subject is. When we're doing ella, it's the same thing. Let's look at an example with ella now. So we're going to use she and we're going to use the word vivir because vivir is an IR verb. So what can we do here? We have to take off the IR and we can say ella vive en España. She lives in Spain. Pay attention here because all I did was take off the IR and I put an E at the end. We can also remove the subject completely and we can say vive en España. Whenever you're doing this in Spanish, the context has to be very clear. The speaker has to know that you are talking about a man or a woman and if it's not very clear it can get very confusing. This is the only time that you really have to use a subject when you're speaking to someone 
someone in Spanish and changing a verb when the context is unclear. If the context is clear, you can just completely omit it. How do we do this for a group of people? If you want to say a group of people with yourself, you're going to say nosotros or nosotras. Nosotros is a group of men or a mixed group of boys and girls. You can say nosotros caminamos en el parque. Here, we are saying nosotros, we, caminamos. This is from the verb caminar. So I took off the AR and I replaced it with amos. Nosotros caminamos in el parque. We can also remove the subject completely and say caminamos in el parque because caminar is an AR verb. So if we replace the AR with A M O S, this is the correct ending for nosotros for an AR verb in the present tense in Spanish. So we can just say nosotros caminamos in el parque, and that's going to mean that we walk in the park and we don't have to indicate the subject. The same thing for nosotras. You don't have to change the ending for nosotras. You only have to put nosotras if it's only a group of girls. If we are doing this for ellos, which is them or they, the ending is not going to be amos or emos. It's going to be an or in. So I could say ellos escriben una carta. So here, as you can see, escribir is an IR verb. I'm going to remove that AR ending. I'm going to replace it with EN. And we don't have to put the subject here. We can just say escriben una carta. And this means they write a note or they write a letter. So again, it's very important that you understand these different verb endings in Spanish because if you do, whenever you conjugate something and whenever you start speaking with someone, it's going to make it easier for you to understand and it's going to be easier for people to understand you. Now we know all of the verb endings and all of the verb types in Spanish. I want to kind of connect why this is so important if you are learning Spanish. Spanish heavily depends on these different endings. 80% percent of the problems my students have when learning Spanish is learning how to use these endings fluently and how to express them with accuracy when they're speaking to a native speaker. So if you are trying to learn Spanish, the first thing that you should do is practice learning all of these different verb types. And you can practice this multiple ways. The first way to do it is to practice reading simple Spanish books. And you can choose simple stories written for children in Spanish. And on my blog, I hired somebody from Venezuela, from Peru, from Nicaragua, all of these different places to help me write these stories so that people who watch my videos can learn how to read Spanish at a basic level. If you would like to practice reading all of these stories, go ahead and click the link in my description and head over to my blog posts. You can find all these stories and you can practice reading them and they are written in very simple Spanish. I also have some worksheets that you guys can choose to download for comprehension practice and to help you further understand how to conjugate all of these verbs because this is really the magic key to learning Spanish. When you learn how to use all of these verb endings, it's going to boost your comprehension, your reading, and your listening skills. So go ahead to my blog, check out these stories if it's something that you're interested in. In this video, I'm not going to go into stem changing or irregular verbs in Spanish. They are a completely different beast. And I want to talk directly to people who want to gain fluency fast. So if that is you, the first thing you need to do is learn how to use all of these Spanish Spanish conjugations correctly with fluency and accuracy. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about stem changing verbs in the present tense, and I'm going to link that video here. So if this is of interest to you, go ahead and click the like and subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.